Camera Girl here from MyFoodChannel.com and today we're going to make something a little different. Butternut squash oatmeal cookies. What? Yeah, you heard that right. They're delicious, they've got a good texture, and they're versatile. You can switch out some ingredients that are more meaningful to you, but these are going to be pretty simple. The first thing you have to do is to make sure your butternut squash is ready to go into your cookies. In this case, we are using frozen butternut squash. You could use fresh squash if you wanted to. Sure, that's a little more work. We're just going to put a little bit of water in. We're going to cook it in the microwave. I don't want to do a lot of work. My sweet tooth is talking to me. It doesn't want to wait for a long time. So we've cooked our frozen butternut squash. And now the important part, whether it's fresh or frozen, you're going to need to drain moisture out. It's a little hot to deal with. So we'll be back in a moment. So while the butternut squash is cooling off so we can smash it and get that moisture out, let's do a couple of other things. First, we're just going to mix together some dry ingredients. We got some oats. You can pat yourself on the back. Hey, oats aren't so terrible. We've got some flour. We are using all purpose. Got a little bit of baking soda, some salt, and some cinnamon. So we're just gonna mix these together. So we've got our dry ingredients together. Now, we're also gonna need to separate an egg. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna separate the egg yolk from the egg white. We're not going to use the egg white, just the yummy egg yolk. Oh, I didn't do so bad. No, that's perfecto. Yeah, there's a little bit of white, but not much. And that's going to help your cookies be a lot chewier. And also, while you're letting your butternut squash, I was going to say calm down, cool down, if you're gonna add anything else in, like you might wanna add raisins or cranberries and you don't have to cut up, we're gonna add a little bit of candied ginger. You could have cut that up. The magic of videotaping, we already have ours done. And if you were adding any nuts and they needed to be chopped up, you could be chopping those up. So those are just three things you can do while your butternut squash is cooling, as well as getting your pans ready to go into the oven. But I think we're ready, we've got to Get the moisture out of that butternut squash. So our butternut squash has been able to cool a little bit. Even without any squishing and muscle. Of course, there's some water because we added some water while it cooked. But lots of ways you can take the moisture out. But my suggestion, I have clean hands. I'm just going to smash it. But you're not trying to get every little bit of moisture out. You can't. You're just trying to get some of it out. It helps the consistency of your cookies, the ones that I want. I want them to be somewhat chewy. This hand method's going to be easier for you than most people because you're angry all the time. <laughs> and I'm so strong. We've got enough of it out. This is a moist vegetable. It's not you're going to get everything out. That'll do it. So you can tell there is a bit more water. So once you've prepared your butternut squash, you're ready to put your cookies together. Just like a lot of traditional cookie recipes, we're going to blend together some butter that I've allowed to soften and some sugar. We're going to blend that together for a couple of minutes on high till it gets a little fluffier, then add a couple more ingredients. Now we have the sugar and butter cream together. So let's add some egg and some vanilla. And again, we're just adding the egg yolk. Now let's add some vanilla. I love vanilla in cookies. It's that underappreciated ingredient. And again, we're gonna just bind this a little more with the beaters. It can just do it a little faster. So we got all these ingredients mixed up. So to the wet ingredients, let's add our dry ingredients. Woohoo! And I'm gonna start off with a spatula, but sometimes I find I want a wooden spoon by the time I get to the end. In fact, you know what? I'm already feeling it. All right, so we have this, the wet and the dry, loosely together. So we've got our butternut squash. That's to add a good texture. Once you've got the dry and the wet ingredients 
mix together now because we're going to add in some ginger you might decide you'd rather have uh, that's just some chopped up candy ginger yes you could have raisins or cranberries instead and i'm adding some walnuts we really enjoy a little nut crunch in our cookies so again you're just trying to distribute these great ingredients throughout your batter oh it smells so good all right Let's get these on the pan as cookies and get them in the preheated oven. Let's get our pan prepared. You could grease it up, but today I'm just going to use some parchment paper instead. All right, so we're going to use a little measuring cup because as you can imagine, if you've ever made cookies, the more you make, they get bigger or smaller. So this way you can sort of keep them a similar size. And these aren't going to spread a lot when you cook. Some cookies spread a lot. These, not so much. Because they're not going to spread much, we're just gonna get them all at about the same height, smash them down just a little bit. So you've got some extra batter here, so you'll have another pan full, huh? Exactly, gonna have two pan fulls. Yeah. Let's get this pan of cookies into the oven. Sooner in, the sooner they're out and ready to eat. We're gonna slide them into our preheated oven. Come back when we smell something good. Beep, 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 beep. Let's get these goodies out. And they got a nice color. Yeah. Now we're going to let them sit for a couple of minutes on the pan because they still could crumble a little bit. They're, they're pretty hardy. But just to be sure, we're just going to give them a couple of minutes and then they'll move to the cooling rack for their final relaxation before we enjoy them. Well, they got a nice color on them. How long were they cooking for? They were cooking for about 12 minutes. I don't know. I thought with all that squash in them, they might look a little soft. And we did cook them a little more than you have to, but you see they're set. Can't wait to dry them. I'm going to transfer them directly to the cooling rack. And most importantly, it's time for the taste test. What do you think, Chef Buck? They've been sitting out for a few minutes, so they shouldn't be piping hot. <laughs> they look nice and moist. Yeah. All right. Let's have a bite. Mm-hmm. I love that candy ginger. They have a very good texture. You want a bite, camera boy? Yep. Let me give it. They're very moist. And I think that ginger is what really uh, adds a nice bite. I think so too. So we've got our second and final pan out of the oven. And all together, this made 28 cookies of this size. Now you can make them smaller and cook them faster and all that. For a size, you can see about that size. <laughs> Find the recipe to make these cookies, go over to myfoodchannel.com. We have a bunch of recipes over there. Do we have a bunch of recipes over there? Or do we have a bunch of recipes over there? We have a lot. Even when you're having cookies, you can feel like, well, at least it's got butternut squash in it. Yeah, you can tell people you had squash. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I got to go get a squash snack right now. That's right. We'll see you next time. Camera Girl signing off from MyFoodChannel.com. Bye-bye.